creativity with my outfit, but uh, <laughs> I had breakfast with him this morning before the game. I love that outfit. So, um, First of all, uh, my thoughts are with right now with Lewis Seen. Um, didn't realize how serious it was until when I saw him carted off. He you know, had like a respirator in his mouth, so I knew something was serious. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see where it goes. Um, I would think he's got to, you know, stay here, which is tough. And, uh, and you know, we'd love for him to be with us. But um, thoughts and prayers with him. And then, uh, you know, as far as the game, obviously huge to get a win. Um, you know, just a typical NFL game, back and forth. Uh, um, but what was atypical was, you know, playing it here. And it was just a uh, tremendous environment in this stadium. You know, first time playing here in this stadium was just tremendous. Um, uh, great facility. It's just a great experience all the way around. Um, the hotel we stayed at, the practice we had on Friday, um, just a really, really positive experience. So I uh, thought our staff did a great job getting us ready and, uh, and helping us transition and be ready for kickoff. And um, so it's, uh, it's great to leave here with a win. And a lot of people put a lot of work into this week to, uh, to make sure we were at our best. But uh, as far as the game itself, you know, I, I, we don't want to kick five field goals. Uh, we want to score touchdowns. And I think that uh, more success in the red zone um, would have enabled us to, you know, pull away a little bit. So that was a disappointment. Um, you know, the field position all game I thought was really favorable, which says a lot about our special teams and our defense getting stops and getting us the ball in, in um, you know, shorter fields. Um, so, you know, there's, there's just a lot to clean up still, you know, similar to coming after the Lions game with a win. You feel great about the win, but you also feel like, uh, you know, there's a lot that you leave out there and, and we've got to... Uh, We've got to get better. I've got to get better. So uh, that's kind of where our focus is. But um, it's tremendous to be three and one and to leave here with a win. Take any questions yet? Yeah. That final deep throw to Jefferson, it looked like you were prepared to throw that before you knew whether or not Jefferson was open. Is that um, something that you were prepared to do based off of the leverage and the coverage that you knew you'd be getting? You know, Arif, I think that's just, you know, kind of just you got to anticipate. You got to, yeah, like you said, based off coverage and you just got to go, you know. Um, um, I think if you wait to let guys get open in this league, you're going to be waiting too long. And um, that's why you want to get great players who can win and you trust them and put the ball out there for them. Can you feel that rhythm heating up with Justin? I mean, you could see it watching it, but do you just start to feel that in game and then realize, okay, I've got to get the ball to him? Like, where does your mind go? Well, I think sometimes it's also defensively, what are they doing? I mean, on the first uh, third down of the game, I think it was the first third down, uh, played man coverage. He got great separation from the guy in man on him, but the free safety dropped down to double him and was standing right where Justin was going. So Justin's winning, doing his part, but they're doubling him, and they happen to be doubling him from a position where they have leverage. So then you progress to Irv, and Irv did a great job winning versus his guy and got the first down. But um, my point is is that you know defenses will still try to do things to take him away. A couple other third downs they did, we went to Adam or KJ, but uh, – Certainly when we get, you know, one-on-one -on -one and we have the time in the pocket, too, is important on some of these uh, third downs where they're rushing hard. But uh, when we got time, I mean, it's, it's uh, a huge asset to be able to work him, you know. What do you think was the core of the issue in the red zone today? You know, I think it's uh, a combination of factors. I think if you look at, I mean, they run together a little bit. Um, you know, the one we had the third and short that we didn't connect on, if you look at it, you know, I, I got to take the guy who's open for the first down, but you'd love to pump it and then work at him on the corner. And then we get the ball back after the turnover that our defense caused. Um, again, they're running together. But that one, again, I thought uh, when I checked it down to JJ that maybe I pumped that one, get the guy to flat foot and go to KJ for a touchdown. So there was plays there where you're like, you know, I could be greedy and try to pump it and, and, and get a touchdown there. Maybe we're not kicking field goals. And then there was one series, uh, I think it was the third quarter, that I thought was the most disappointing one. Just, um, you know, the delay of game, which is on me. And then the uh, uh, twice, I think, Justin was open for touchdowns and we didn't connect and checked it down to Adam once. I thought the corner was sinking and he wasn't. And then the other one uh, threw it earlier than I wanted to and didn't quite see Justin put his foot in the ground. And he ended up separating. And if I just let him more, I think it's a touchdown. So... You know, that's where you feel like the plays are there to make and uh, that we didn't connect. So that was disappointing. Okay. We've only had one overtime game here in the London games, the one yeah. that you and Andy uh, yeah, exactly. played in. Um, <laughs> you seem to enjoy entertaining the fans here. Man, I would have loved to have pulled away. But uh, as I said to somebody on the field after the game, I said, it's a great product. I mean, if you're a fan, I mean, we gave you something to watch today, kept it close and entertaining. But um, 
Uh, yeah, it's crazy. I was thinking how six years ago it was Andy and, and I playing and uh, went to overtime, and I was fully expecting we'll make that kick and we were going to go to overtime again, and I was just expecting to not have it end in a tie or a draw again. So uh, grateful we won. Great to get on an eight-hour flight back and know that we got a win and we're 3-1, and one, but um, you know, you also think about all the things you got to do better. This is a great product. Do you think the NFL is doing enough to protect its players? Uh, I think every year it keeps getting better and better. I think they, they uh, keep – you know, improving it every single year, and um, you know, there's always going to be risk. It looked like you got hit in the helmet a couple of times on those throws that were not called. Uh, I didn't notice the helmet. I got in the ribs pretty good once, but uh, uh, they're allowed to hit me there. So, uh, so um, yeah, you just got to stand in there and, and deliver and and uh, keep doing that. Mark, what are you liking about the early resilience of this team? Well, I think it's going to be games like this going forward. It's going to be like this when you get to, you know, if you can make the playoffs, get in January football, it's how it's going to be. So you have to uh, find ways to just be gritty and grind things out and, and respond when things don't go your way. And uh, We're certainly getting experience with that early, and we'll probably be experiencing it middle and late because that's just the way this league is. But um, um, certainly we think we can play better too and maybe give ourselves a better chance as well. Something that's come up again in the last couple of weeks is natural grass and synthetic grass. Yeah. You obviously played at Wembley with yep. natural grass and here's synthetic. Do you have any thoughts on that on the matter? I'm a natural ga- grass guy. Uh, you know, in college, played on natural grass at home, loved it. As long as it's well kept, you can't beat natural grass. That being said, sometimes it's unrealistic, and you do what you can. And I think uh, my understanding was that there was, you know, we were we were tearing up the pitch pretty good, and so it was it was messing it up for the for the uh, soccer guys. So. Um, you know, I think there's an awareness of what's realistic. What do you think uh, to play in other countries in the future? I think it's a, um, it's been true. You know, I've been over here now in the off season a few times too to help promote our game and our product. And um, I think it's tremendous to see the growth. I think the atmosphere today was just outstanding. And, um, you know, it'd be great to see what else is out there and what more we can do and see where it goes from here. But um, I would like to think, you know, the momentum's going the right direction. It's just going to keep building. Kirk, at 3-1, uh, this is the, the best start for the Vikings in five or six years through four games. Um, what's the upside um, for, for the team? What's the potential of, of, of the Vikings? You know, it's hard to even look down the road. You know, I think it's just one week at a time. Each game is its own stage in, in, this, in this journey. And uh, whether you win or lose, you kind of flush it and just move to the next one. And um, so, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We're just one game at a time, keep battling, and try to find a way to have more points than the other team when we're done each week. But uh, um, we've also got to keep improving each week and, and play better football. Right, Thank you. Thank you.